Uh, well, first of all, thank you. Uh, this is, um, this is, I hope, going to be a, a, an interesting talk. I, I sort of, when, when, when Graham asked me to do this, um, I was excited because uh, knowing Graham, I thought, well, if he's organizing a conference, it's going to be people who are going to sort of want a bit of a challenge and wouldn't mind a, big of, a bit of a rant. Yeah. Um, and, um, and, and I also have to thank Phil because I think he uh, set me up very nicely uh, because he talked about a lot of the stuff that I traditionally talk about, identifiers, um, and how important they are and why you should use them. And I think it's just adorable that um, whereas a few years ago I was trying to get people to assign any identifiers to anything, now we're worried about having two identifiers on the same thing. Um, that's, uh, I think, progress. Um, I am the Director of Strategic Initiatives at Crossref, which basically translates to new shit. Um, I do the, uh, so I was brought on, on 2000, at about 2007. The DOI system was pretty well established by then. Um, but they, uh, the Crossref board had a notion that there were a whole bunch of other things that had similar characteristics uh, that uh, could also be built uh, by a group of people, by different you know, um, uh, parties, um, infrastructure, and uh, they brought me on to do that. And so um, I've done a number of things, uh, one of which has also been mentioned here, which is ORCID, which came out of Crossref. I was the first uh, interim CTO of ORCID. Um, and, um, and so there are a few things probably here that um, uh, that came out of Crossref one way or another. Just a quick question, how many people here have orchids? I know, uh, Phil, oh, that's so nice. Okay, the rest of you, um, I suggest you sign up. You will be able to do it by the end of this talk, I'm sure, it's very easy. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on. So, so Graham asked me to do something um, uh, to, to give a talk, and, um, and I do have this very bad habit, which is that um, when people ask me to give a talk, um, I say yes, that's the first bad habit. Um, and then the second bad habit is that uh, they, a few weeks later, desperately ask me for a title and a topic, and whatever it is that I'm angry about at that moment, um, that's what I tend to uh, you know, talk about. So he hit me at a time when I was reading yet another thing about citation and uh, yet another thing about how DOIs make something citable, a phrase that just drives me wild. Um, and, um, and so I was, I was highly agitated and so uh, I think after about the fifth time he asked me for a title and an abstract, I decided on this, um, the citation fetish. And uh, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and take this to a, a sort of a different level than the normal citation rant, right? The normal citation rant, we heard a little bit about it, right? It's inaccurate, it's distorted, particularly things like impact factor, but even things like H index have all sorts of distortions. Um, we're using these things to promote people. We're putting too much influence on them. I'm going to take this uh, even sort of, I hope, deeper, and I'm going to question almost everything we know about citations, or that we think we know about citations. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody likes the impact factor. All right. Um, and of course, uh, in the context of this, I'm not talking about the, you know, the, the, the usual uh, notion of uh, uh, fetish, the popular one, but about this one, right? If you look at fetish, there's a very long, uh, description of what we think of as fetish, and then down here we've got this sort of inanimate objects worship for supposed ma magical powers. Um, and that's kind of the, the, the meaning that I have here, which is that we put a lot of uh, faith and we think we know a lot about what we're doing when we cite things, and I'm not sure that we actually do. And I think that this is an important thing for us to think about at this stage, not just because our careers increasingly, or your careers, thankfully, not mine, uh, increasingly depend on citations, um, but also because we're in the process of changing our citation practices, or at least migrating old citation practices from the paper era into the digital era. And we're uh, beginning to apply citation to things that we didn't traditionally apply citation to. So for instance, data and software and other things. Um, and as we do this, I think it's worth us sitting back and thinking about what on earth have we been doing when we cite things? What is it that's actually going on here? Um, and so, you know, the next definition that um, I'll, I'll look at is just citation itself. Um, 
and it means a number of things, and I'll go through these in reverse chrono chronological order. Uh, this, uh, in the US at least, it means you might get a traffic ticket, um, which I think is, um, it also cost possibly means a prize, and then of course, in our context, it often means that what you're doing is you're quoting someone or you're referring to something else that somebody said or to something else that supports an argument. But one of the things that we find when we talk about citations is that often we're using the wrong words to begin with, okay? And in order to illustrate this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my favorite set of slides. I use these. This is like the most useful set of slides I, I have. Um, and I use them in a lot of presentations to illustrate completely different things. But this time, it has to do with citations. Does anybody know what this is? Paper. Excellent. It's a paper. How do you know that? I've seen it before. I know you've seen it before. <laughs> you don't count. Sorry for cheating. <laughs> but pardon me. We've seen things that look exactly like that. But you you can't read that. You can't tell. But but you can get better. What's that? Okay, right. And uh, what's uh, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine, cool. And uh, what's that? Isn't that scary? Do you ever remember learning that? Right? You can do that. You can't go out to somebody in the street and ask them to do that. They won't know what on earth you're talking about. Right? And we can do that. We don't remember learning it, and yet it's absolutely embedded in our brains. Um, tell me, what's the, what's the, what's the discipline? Mmm. <laughs> can't. Okay. Bold statement. All right. Um, now, this is unfair because there's a, just a probability. I was going to say, what language is it in? But, but these are things you can't tell from this, right? Um, and in fact, if you look at this paper, you'll find out that it is um, in the uh, social sciences and humanities. Okay? Fine. So there are certain things that we all recognize as being an academic paper, some things that, we, you know, these define the shape of an academic paper, yet we don't know what discipline it is. It could have been the humanities, it could have been the sciences, physics. So isn't that weird? We have something common that we've never really thought of between all of these disciplines. Okay, so we got something here. We can go on, right? What's that? <laughs> references? References, cool. Okay, fine, cool. And uh, just finale, what's that? Yeah, it's okay, fine. Cool. So, um, and you're right, of course. So I'm going to take this to another level, um, and this is something that I've just started doing recently, and it's a little harder to do and a little trickier, but, and I, I'm going to probably have to give you at least a clue. But if I do this and I tell you that uh, red is a number, what's uh, yellow, red, yellow in there? Okay, sorry. So yellow, red, yellow. You see a few of them in here? What are they? Citations. Okay, that, that's good. I like that. You're falling into my trap. All right. Absolutely. It's citations. Okay? So we've gone through this thing. We've been able to identify all sorts of aspects of this document without actually being able to read it. Right? And, um, but I want to note something here. Because we all did something automatically that was correct. Okay? If you take two of these things and you put them together, right, we identified that on the left we're looking at citations and on the right we're looking at references. That each of those citations, right, can point to a reference and that sometimes multiple citations point to a reference. Now, when I go out and I tell you about my citation count, what am I actually talking about? Am I talking about the number of times in the text that you refer to my article? No. I'm referring to the reference count. So right from the very start, almost everything that we think we know about citation counting, citation metrics, citation indices is just busted at least in our language, right? Now think about this also from another perspective. It could be, right? Let's say this thing said, you know, 
Builder 2008, Builder 2009, Builder 2011, Graham or Steele 2013, Builder, 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 right? You would, if you were counting citations, possibly conclude that Builder had more of an influence on this article than Steele, right? But that's not what's going to appear over here. It may appear as Builder, Steele. That's important. And so one of the big things that I want to do is I want to alert people to this one problem, at least in vocabulary, that when we talk about citation counting, citation indices, all of these things, what we're talking about, and I include Crossref in this, we're guilty, okay? We have this thing called cited by, and we have something called the citation count, and it does precisely this. It's the exact same mistake. But it's got to make you think, right? How, much, how many other mistakes are we making here about things? All right, I'm going to shift a little bit here, um, and I want to talk about something else that I think is becoming increasingly important. And that is, what is the difference between a link online and a citation? Because notionally, they seem very similar. They're hypertextual mechanisms for you to go from one thing to another. In print, it was a very laborious process. You had to go to a library and find the thing and pull it out, read it. In the electronic world, uh, it's a lot easier, certainly. You can generally click on the thing, whether it's a citation or a link. But are they, in fact, different things? Do we mean different things when we use the phrase link or citation? And this is the best part of the entire presentation because I get to use my favorite quote. This just came out recently. Um, and it was this. <laughs> It's the beginning of a blog post, and when I saw this, I thought, okay, I can retire now because nobody's ever going to say anything like that again. But, um, but, but this is a great excuse to use this, mostly because this posting, which is, it's, it's, I mean, besides the fact that it's got this fantastic starting line, um, is interesting, and it talks about something else I've written where I rant about infrastructure, and I won't go into that now. But one of the cool things about this is that it illustrates the problem that I'm trying to talk about here. Um, in a, in a, you know, uh, perfectly. This blog post um, is about three pages long, um, and it's written by a person who's clearly, you know, an academic, um, but they're writing for a popular audience. It's on a blog, and um, so what it does is it actually manifests all sorts of different sort of behaviors when they link to things. And unfortunately, you're not going to be able to read this, but I encourage you to go and, 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 and read it and look at these myself. And I've just taken a very cursory um, attempt to, to categorize these things. But um, on the first page, um, there's that thing that says, Jeffrey Builder says, gosh, I, I don't know what the heck happened there. Anyway, um, that was higher resolution, I assure you. Um, and it says, you know, Jeffrey Builder, Martin Hedegaard, blah, 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 blah. And then up here it says, um, it says, uh, it says, uh, it actually links, like, you know, uh, Jeffrey Builder OpenCon. And this was, uh, he saw a talk that I gave at OpenCon on infrastructure, and he links to it. But that's important. He says, Jeffrey Builder OpenCon, and then links Jeffrey Builder and OpenCon, right? If we go on to the next page, and, and let me just, sorry, back up to this. That is a classic sort of citation trope, right? You give the name and, um, and, the, and the venue and sometimes a date or, right? And then, and then you link to it. So that's citation-like. And that's why I've marked that in red. If you go to the next page, there are a few more links on there, right? Uh, one of them is to an article uh, about Heidegger. Um, and even though it doesn't use that citation style, that is, you know, name, date, location, it does use a DOI to link to it, which is kind of an odd choice. Right? So it looks like a link that you might see in any blog, but if you look behind it, it's a DOI that it links to. And then you've got two other links down here, and I'm going to show the, another slide where this will become a little more clear. You've got two other links here that follow classic blog style, where you're like blah, 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 and you say something parenthetical, and you link to it off in Wikipedia or wherever it was, right? And that's, and that's a very colloquial blog style uh, that we've all kind of adopted. So you've got a mix of things going on here. You've got sort of vaguely formal citation style. You've got you know, this weird thing with the DOI. And then you've got another citation here. 
Uh, and this is, I think, boy, these graphics did not come in well. Um, but it's another formal citation. Um, and, um, and then on the last page, funnily enough, you get these two other things, right? Uh, one of which is he includes two notes, right, at the end. One saying, uh, these are all my opinions, and the second one says, by the way, I wrote a lot about this in my dissertation. Here's a link to the dissertation. But they're in a separate section. And then he has two references, right? And neither of which is directly cited in the body of the text. All right? Now, believe me, I'm not criticizing. It just happened to fall into my hands. And that's why I'm analyzing this thing. The blog post, um, you know, most people would just not notice this. I'm just being obsessive here. So, but here again is the breakdown, right? On the first page, we had Jeffrey Builder OpenCon 2015, links to a YouTube video. Uh, we had blurs the boundaries of the body schema, right? And it links to a DOI. Now that's weird, right? Because it doesn't, it, you know, it's, it's linking to something formal, yet it's a very informal type of citation. Then you've got the classic sale of SSR and Elsevier link elsewhere link, and those are classic blogish type links, right? And then you've got this last one. Now that was it. Lawrence Lessig code is law, right? Another sort of formal citation style. All of these things are intertwingled in the same document. All these styles, right? So we're, you know, clear. And I am again. I do this. I don't know why I do this, but I do it, right? I go through in this one. I link this way, and I don't have a methodology, and that's a problem. And that's what's beginning to bother me is that we don't. We aren't thinking about what we're doing in those different contexts. What is it? Why is it that in some contexts we put a name and a date? and make it clear that that's a citation. In another context, we're happy to just link to something parenthetically. And I've got the feeling that there should be, at some point, you know, a, an effort. And you know, somebody's going to tweet to me and say, yeah, there's like tons of literature on this. You don't go look at it. Um, but I haven't found it, so it can't exist. Um, but if I think of it as a, as a first pass, you know, the characteristics that I think of if you're just linking to something in a document, when I'm doing this, if I'm not going to say, you know, Cameron Nalen, 2008, blah, 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 you know, if it's a link, it's generally parenthetical. It's not essential to the argument, right? It's some background material. By the way, Elsevier bought SSRN. Here's the information about that in case you missed it. Um, it doesn't have a lot of affordance, right? That is that it doesn't really tell you where you're going or what you're doing if you click on that, right? Remember one of the... Um, I think uh, one of the links, the text of the link was like recently or something like that. That tells you virtually nothing about where you're going or what to expect when you click on it, except that it actually does because whatever it is, you know it's not going to be critical to the argument because of the way they linked it. And you know, there just there aren't any other cues. Um, and what I mean by cue is if you think about the, the citation practice that we use of putting name date, right? What does name date before a link allow you to do? It allows you to mentally, if you're familiar with the literature, right, swap in the argument there and then proceed without following the link if you need to. Right? So something's, again, somehow we're making a decision that in this case we can't expect the person to mentally swap in this thing. And in this case, if the person's familiar with the literature, we're going to put a formal citation and then they might be able to swap that thing in as they read. So a citation. I would say, in these cases, and I think it matches roughly with what was done in this document, is designed to provide evidence or credit, specifically where there's some sort of where it's critically important to an argument that they're making. Um, clear if, if, if inconsistent affordance, right? And what I mean by that is that sometimes it will say Builder 2008. Other times it was just a link, but it had a DOI. And the DOI alone is some sort of an affordance telling you that at least this is you know, scholarly literature, or purports to be scholarly literature. Um, you know, and it generally has explicit cues. It generally has a name, a date, a, a, you know, some, some other detail that allows you to swap it in. And this last one, I'll talk about this in more detail, is uh, because it's not actually common to, um, to our practice in social sciences uh, and sciences and humanities, but that is signaling. That is indicating in some way why you're citing that. Is this in support of your argument? Is this counter to your argument? And that becomes important later when I talk about stuff. So, all right. So we've said two things now, I think, broadly, 
Uh, one is that we don't know what we're talking about when we talk about citations and references, or we do, but we use confusing language. The second is that when we start linking online, we're using this weird amalgamation of sort of informal linking and formal citation, and it's not exactly clear why we pick one over the other when we pick one over the other. The other thing, and this is really the thing that was probably sticking in my craw when poor Graham asked me to speak here, um, is that increasingly, and this was, has been epitomized so far in this uh, conference, and believe me, I understand it, right? So I'm not, you know, um, I'm not sort of uh, criticizing people for being concerned about this, but I do want to draw attention to it. And that is that if you start looking at the literature out there about why you cite something, right? Promotional material. So for instance, in this one, this is the Force 11 principles about why you should, God, what's going on with this text? This is terrible. The Mac is, is, is letting me down here. Um, but uh, if you look at the principles, they list reasons why you should cite data. And, um, and it does say that, you know, that, the, that the, the reasons are listed in no particular order. But quite frankly, I don't buy that. Right? I mean, that's just a cop out. When you say they're in no particular order and then your first one is importance, um, you know there's a bit of an order there, right? It's a backwards order in an argument, in an argument sense, and that obviously it's begging the question. What you should do is say, these are the things that are, and by the way, that means it's important, right? It's begging the question, but it is, does appear to be in an, in an order. And the second thing here is credit and attribution, okay? And this is where I'm going to start getting grumpy. Because the third one, third one down here is evidence. All right? So notionally, you know, and I would just pick on them. I've got about a bazillion examples. I'll go through a few where people inevitably talk about citation as being about credit, as being primarily about credit. Not about providing evidence, not by providing you data that allows you to actually test what, or reproduce what's being said. They talk about credit. So uh, that's the list. Okay, apparently I knew that the picture was going to be blurry. You know, credit for all your research. I don't think they do this anymore, but this used to be their tagline on the Figshare site, right? If you go to, so this was, this was sweet, you know. I got invited to, uh, to be on a panel to pick speakers at this software credit workshop, right? And everybody there was very concerned that people, as we all are, right? I'm not, like, I'm not belittling this concern, um, that, you know, the picture, people are not getting credit for vital things that they're doing to support research. You know, so their concern is that we should be able to cite software so we can get credit. Not so that we can rerun the experiments, not so that we can actually reproduce the research and science, but so that we can get credit. And it goes on. If you go, uh, what's this? I forget. This is, uh, ah, yes, improving GitHub for science. Again, a fantastic effort. I love it. You know, you can assign DOIs to things. And now, you know, sharing your work is good, collaborating is good, but you want to get the required academic credit. And we keep going through. This is Wikipedia. And if you go through there, you know, you go through there and say, you know, this is an interesting one. It goes towards plagiarism first, which I, I find weird. Um, and, um, and then determine, you know, and then it goes on and says, and to determine whether the reference material supports the author's arguments. Yeah, after that, evidence. But again, credit. All right. So here's the gist of my argument. All right. I understand that we have to eat, that you have to get promoted, that you have jobs, that you have to be rewarded for the things that you do. But this is a classic case where the stuff that you're doing to become a successful academic might be interfering with the stuff that you need to do in order to do good science or to do good scholarship. If you are privileging credit over evidence, that worries me. And it particularly worries me if we start moving this tradition from papers and articles to data and software. Let's play an experiment. So I, this is, so this is, oh, did I do this? Yes, I did do this. Did you see the great fake TED talk? Yeah. Where like, yes, so they, there's a great um, like meta TED talk about how to give a talk at TED. 
And it's just sort of like blather, 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 hold your hands like that, show a picture of the world, <laughs> say something grand, you know, it's fantastic. Anyway, so this is my, you know, show a picture of the world because what I'm about to say is tremendously profound. I'm trying to get your attention. Okay. So now I'm going to move from one planet to two planets. I'm up in the game here, right? If you had two planets, right, this is a mental exercise. One, where science could be was being practiced, attempting to be practiced, and you could credit people for things, but you didn't point to the evidence. And on the other planet, you could point to the evidence, but you didn't credit them. Where could you still do science? Where would science still work? I'm not saying where would your career still work. No. I'm just saying where would science still work? Evidence. Pardon? Evidence. evidence. We really have to think about this. We have to start reversing this just sort of like automatic notion that citation is about credit, that citation is about job promotion, that citation is about, you know, uh, showing the, 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 the amount that you contributed to the literature. This really does promise to undermine um, the scientific endeavor. Now I'm going to go rushing through a bunch of other little niggles that I have, and particularly rush through them because I've got four minutes. Uh, the first thing being that, of course, we assume that a citation is also a vote, right? that it is saying that something is positive. Um, we know for a long time that, you know, ideally we would have citation types. This was talked about, not ages ago, but 1983, seems like ages ago, uh, by a guy named Randy Trigg who was writing about hypertext, and he created a hypertext uh, type ontology that divided the kinds of things that you might want to say about something, and I think he had 60-odd um, citations. More recently, David Schotten and company came up with the cytoontology, and uh, they came up with like 83 ways that you could, uh, reasons that you might cite something. You know, this is uh, in favor of, this is against, this is sarcastic, this is, you know, whatever. And funnily enough, we all know that this would kind of be helpful because we cite things for different reasons, right? Some of it's just background, some of it is counter evidence, some of it is, and we don't do it. And yet, if we did it, that would actually possibly be very useful. Think of all the gumph that we put in references at the moment that have to do with locating something on a physical shelf and that's not really needed that much anymore. Wouldn't it be nice if we could replace it with something that would be helpful, which is why on earth you cited something, right? And funnily enough, we do have a practical example of it. Well, I say practical, except in law, this is the style guide for lawyers in the United States, one of the preeminent style guides. Uh, unfortunately, um, it is unbelievably copy protected and the publishers are like have, have been exploiting the heck out of it and so there's a new version uh, that's open um, that does the same thing but the cool thing about both and this was pi you know I don't know whether it's pioneered but it was certainly established by this book over here is the concept of citation signals right and they're not asking people to go in and mark up stuff in XML or put you know uh, you know link data into the thing they're asking people to use common language common you know, patterns when they introduce a citation. So it goes in the text. If you say according to or see also, right, that's supporting authority, supporting evidence. If you say compare with contra, right, that's contrasting evidence. It's not that many terms. You could memorize this in maybe a you know, few minutes. And then when you write and you put that before citation, it gives you essentially not just a human readable, but a machine parsable and readable way of understanding why somebody cited. It's not as precise as you might like it. It doesn't have 83 terms, but nobody's going to use 83 terms, right? So this actually looks like a practical thing. We could look at doing something like that. The same thing happens with contributor types, and I'm just going to blow through this very quickly. Again, we sit there and we look at author lists that have thousands of people on them, right? And ooh, look, this paper that I was the 999th author on got cited. That's pretty cool. Um, but what does it mean if I was doing something like running the experiments? Now, clearly, I contributed. I'm not like trying to demean these roles. I'm just trying to point out that it means different things. So we've got all sorts of complications here. And there's an effort to create a taxonomy of, 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 um, of contribution types and so on and so forth. OK, so we've got all of these weird distortions. We're not sure what, about the language we're using. Um, we, um, you know, we, we, we cite things in weird ways online. We're not, you know, consistent about it. Um, we have um, 
you know, problems with citation types and things like that. So everything looks like a vote and that's distorting. And just to distort it further, we have all sorts of other bizarre things like reference limits, right? Where you actually have journals who are saying, yeah, you can give evidence, but not too much. <laughs> What's that? Seriously. I mean, even if it were all about credit, you can give credit, but not too much. That's a little more understandable, right? Because that could be exploited. You know, you might just try and be pumping up all your colleagues and so on and so forth. But if we were thinking about citations primarily as being about evidence, it would be bizarre to say, no, nah, you're only allowed to point to 50 pieces of evidence. Okay? And to complicate things, now we're moving into data and software. And with data and software, we have two additional problems, one of which is that we don't actually have anything, and you may hate Ferber, and lots of people do, and it's got problems, but we don't even have the equivalent of it for data. We don't have it the equivalent of discussing what the difference is between a work and a manifestation, and so on and so forth. Should a TSV file and a CSV file be treated differently for citation purposes? I don't think so, right? But they're certainly going to have different hashes, and they're going to have different other characteristics, but we don't have a mechanism for talking about these kinds of differences with data. And then the other big bugbear with data uh, is going to be versions. And the big problem that we have there is that in the engineering world, we have a very specific notion of what a significant version change is. And that is that that's a version that breaks backwards compatibility. All right? Now imagine that I was a research software engineer and I wrote software and I said, fantastic news for you, researcher. I haven't broken backwards compatibility, but I've totally replaced the algorithm behind it. So your results are going to be slightly different. The researcher's concept of a major version and a significant version differs fundamentally from your average researcher's concept of what a, a version is. And this is going to come and bite us again if we don't think about it. So another picture of the planet to wrap up, right? What I'm saying is very important. It has global consequences. Um, please, right, don't, don't think magically about citations. Think about them critically. I'm probably wrong on a lot of stuff, but I hope that I've at least jogged your, you know, made you doubt things a little bit. Um, and I think it's really important to start doubting everything we think we know about citations as we do things like altmetrics, as we do things like start citing stuff online, as we do things like starting data, start citing data and, and uh, software and other things like that. So thank you very much and credits. Thank you very much, uh, Jeff. A couple of uh, answers that I'll give you an answer in, in a second. So before we take for two questions, if not go on to Twitter. If I'm citing something, it's essentially the, I'm also providing the evidence as well. So how can I differentiate this thing? Well, um, I, so, I mean, that's a good question, right? Um, but, um, but it ha sorry, uh, I'm, I might. Okay, fine. Um, so, um, you know, obviously the biggest thing is, is choosing when to cite something, right? You know, um, it, you know if you're, and, and, and actually providing enough information to get the person to the evidence. And here's an example of what I mean, right? Uh, you could um, conceivably, uh, if you were in a you know, credit-focused world, say, I'm going to link uh, to the latest version of this, um, of this uh, entry or article by this researcher. But of course, the latest version might say something different 50 years from now from, or 10 years from now or five years from now from what was said when you looked at it. Okay, so the choice about whether you link to the sort of current version or to the precise version you were looking at is an important choice to make. And if you're focusing on credit, you might make the wrong choice because after all, it's going to the same thing written by the same person. You're given the credit, but it wouldn't allow a person to see the evidence or at least to see what you saw at the time that you cited it. So that's sort of one example of it. And it manifests itself in other ways as well. So I think that it's a combination of just choosing when to cite, but it's also thinking about the granularity that you cite at, um, whether or not you know, what you're doing will actually get somebody to look at the stuff that you were looking at, and whether that link will last 50 years in the future. 
so that the person looking at it 50 years from now looks at what you saw, not something new, something different, something that might lead them to conclude you misinterpreted the work or, 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 or worse? Right. Is that any other? We have one more question. Citation of evidence. Can't you look at citations basically as social engineering to get us to cite evidence? I mean, Fitchie's original sales pitch, I guess their motivation was providing evidence and reproducibility, but the way they engineered that was, hey, my stuff can be citable. Right. So it, it, it seems to me you're kind of setting, I get where you're coming from, but it seems to me you're kind of setting up the citation trap, whereas the citation is. Oh, no, 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 not at all. No, but, but it's the motivation <laughs> is to make the evidence available. That's right. Especially the credit the feet doing that for the good of science. But that itself is sad, right? I mean, no, you know, but I, I, and I said that at the beginning. I understand that how it works, but we're here at a conference talking about scholarly communication, presumably because we want to improve it, um, presumably because we think that there are things that are broken, and we all generally do, right? So as far as sympathetic audiences go, we're not generally, I mean, obviously we're all career driven, but um, we are trying to meta-think our way around this. And so absolutely, people do this for, and it, like all you know, proxies for things, the, the danger is that it gets replaced, right? And that's what we need to be aware of. And that's happening, right? It's not that, you know, it's not that it's a threat. It is happening. And the people are beginning to think that it's all about young researchers, really talented, smart researchers, think that it's absolutely about credit. And that's bound to have a knock-on effect. That's, Anyway, I think that's my... Yeah. Yep. Okay, thanks again. Okay.